Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to this homeschooling naturopath. My name is Hannah, if you are new here, and I'm a homeschooling mom of three little girls who are 10, 8, and 6, and I'm also a fully qualified naturopath living and working in New Zealand. On this channel I share content related to homeschooling, homemaking, motherhood, as well as some naturopathic info throughout some of my content here. Today's video I am bringing you guys our 2023 homeschool read aloud reviews. Um, so I know we're a little bit, you know, we're making our way steadfast into 2024, but I did want to bring this 2023 read aloud review to you guys now. So if you are interested to see a little review on some of the books that we read as read alouds in our homeschool this past year, stay tuned. <laughs> Let's get into it. So for the 2023 school year, um, I felt like I kept a pretty good log, or, you know, like a pretty good record of the books that we were reading as read aloud books in our homeschool. However, when I went back and looked at my 2023 planner, I realized that there were actually there were so many books that I must have missed because there were like at least five books that I clearly remember reading that were not on that list. So I can't tell you if this is all the books we read aloud in our homeschool or not, um, but I know for a fact that these are quite a few that we definitely did read this past school year. So I love read alouds. I love having like a nice chapter book to read to all my girls. Typically when I do our read aloud is when we are having our morning snack. Um, it's also a book that, you know, if we're all really enjoying it, um, then I'll bring it to like our before bedtime routine. Um, you know, once the girls are showered and in their jammies, we'll sit and read a couple chapters of our read aloud then. Um, if we do any car travel, then I'll bring the book along, well, you know, if my husband's driving, <laughs> um, then I'll bring the book along and read it then. So this past year, I started up a book club within our homeschooling group here in the city that we live in, um, and it was a huge, huge success. I, uh, all of the kids involved in the book club had so much fun, my children included. We had, we just had the best time. Um, so first of all, what I have to show you is the five books that we read. Um, and these, the book club started in August last year. Um, and so it was the months of August, September, October, November, December. Why did I have to think about that for so long? Yeah, so we read five books um, and, and I am continuing it. I've already chosen the 10 books that we'll be reading for the 2024 school year. Um, which I actually shared in our group subject pick video. So if, if you're interested to see what books I've picked for our book club for this coming school year, it is at the end of that family picks video, which I will link down below. But for the review of the five books that we read in our book club this past year, the first book that we read was Rod Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This was the book that we started with in August last year. <gasps> This was the biggest hit I could even imagine. We had so much fun with this book. My daughters and I included, as well as all of the kids involved in the book club. Um, because it was the first time that we were getting together as a book club, you know, no one really knew what exactly to expect. Um, but that first book club meetup, there were probably... I, I want to say there was at least 20 children, um, and I, I hosted, so everyone came here. There was uh, at, at least 20 children, and um, I think there must have been five or six ad adults, and it was just, it was a blast. Roald Dahl, I mean, I feel like most people either love him or hate him. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I enjoy quite a lot of his books, but obviously some of them are a little bit more on the questionable side. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is probably, oh, and Matilda, we've also read in the past. They're honestly probably the only two books of his that I would definitely read aloud, and they're the only two books that I have read aloud to my kids. Um, but regardless, um, we read this, and it was amazing. I did the literature guide from, um, Barefoot Within the Trees. I'll try and find a little picture and link it here. My girls and I did that literature guide alongside of this read aloud for the, for the month of August. And it was just the most beautiful, richest time. We went um, to a chocolate factory here in the city we live in and saw the process of making chocolate. And we learned all about 
the history of the cacao bean and I mean how, how slavery was incorporated and colonization and like we learned a huge amount of history and science alongside of this book. Um, and when we got together with our book club, we watched the most recent movie of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. One of my uh, mom friends brought along some um, ceremonial cacao, like um, drinking cacao for like specific um, cacao ceremonies. And it, it, yeah, it was it was just so special. I made a chocolate sourdough and I mean, it was just all things chocolate. It was so, so cool. And I decorated our house a little bit for it, not like excessively. I'll try and put some pictures in so you guys can see. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. We had the best time with this book. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend, obviously, you know, raw doll is slightly questionable and some of the things are slightly questionable. I be the only thing that bothered me actually was his use of the word fat. Uh, you know, nowadays we feel a bit differently about that word. Um, I don't like it. It's not a word that we use in our home. Um, I, you know, we don't ever say that about someone. We never use that word in a negative way way um which Roa Dahl does in this book and then I believe the only other thing um I think he uses the word I don't I mean I don't know can I can I say that here are your kids around I don't know you know the word ASS it's not like a bad word but he does use that word <laughs> um in this book which um I, I just skipped over when I read the book I just skipped that or I either I changed it to a different word um but some of the moms in my book club said that their kids just thought it was hilarious that that I believe it was uh, Willy Wonka himself he calls he calls one of the kids that or some something like that if I'm remembering correctly but anyway all the moms were cool with it um but yeah that's the only negative things I have to say is that use of the word fat and then you know that other word so yes, that was um, our first book club book. Next up for the month of September, which was our springtime, we read Charlotte's Web. I love this book. My kids loved this book. The, home, the um, homeschool group, our book club loved this book. Um, I We mainly listened to this on audiobook for some reason. We were traveling a lot in the month of September. Um, and so we just mainly listened to this on audio. And it was fine. My girls and I also did um, a literature guide for this book and the literature guide I chose for this book was um, from Hearth Magic off Etsy and that was amazing. It had so many beautiful craft ideas and recipes and projects and extra th like it was just it was spectacular. The only thing I was disappointed about with that particular a uh, literature guide was that we didn't finish it because there was just so much it would be impossible to finish in one month, honestly. Um, but yeah, I love that doing that literature guide alongside this book and this book was a really big hit. Uh, we all really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we were away in a different city when our book club met up to watch the movie. So we watched the movie separately. Um, but from the photos that my friend who hosted showed me, she decorated her house for this book and all the kids really enjoyed Um reading this book and watching the movie together. Okay, the next book in our book club lineup was Enid Blyton's The Secret Seven, um, Mystery of the Theater Ghost. Now, this book is actually written by Pamela Butchart. However, it is part of the Enid Blyton collection. My girls really, really enjoyed this book, as did I. It was a very fun read. It was pretty quick. It only took us about two weeks to get through, which ordinarily um, our read-alouds can take us a lot longer than that. Um, we loved it. I mean, there was an element of mystery and surprise, you know, it's like a, a whodunit type of mystery story. Um, you know, the book will lead you toward one suspicious person and then you kind of clear their name and then you like are led toward another suspicious person. And I mean, the whole book, you're just waiting. It's like a, almost like a Scooby-Doo type vibe. You know, you're just, you're waiting to figure out who did it. Um, and when you finally figure out, you know, it's the end of the book and it's like, oh, of course it was that person all along. Um, so we really, really enjoyed this. However, I know that it wasn't the biggest hit for our book club. A lot of, um, 
of the families don't really like the idea of a ghost. In fact, a lot of the families sort of had dropped off by this point. We read this for the month of October also, by the way, and a lot of families thought it was like a, a Halloween type of book, which it's not. It's absolutely not a Halloween book. Um, but a lot of the families don't celebrate Halloween here in New Zealand. Most people do not celebrate Halloween. I have a full <laughs> video of how people do not like Halloween here in New Zealand um, in general, generally speaking. If you're a Kiwi and you love Halloween, shout out to you. Where do you live? I'll come trick-or-treating at your house. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the families didn't really like this book. So some, some of them did. Some of them did. They really enjoyed the mystery as well. Um, and we really liked it. So yeah, I would recommend this. It was a really fun, intriguing read for my kids. Okay, next up uh, for the month of November, we read this book here by a Ki oh something a bookmark's falling out um, by a Kiwi author. Her name is Lauren Keenan, and this book is called Amorangi and Millie's Trip Through Time. Now. I read this book all by myself prior to choosing it for our book club and when I read this book by myself it took me probably about four hours to get through <laughs> in like one sitting and I mean it's a decent sized book. <laughs> I love this book. I absolutely love this book and when the month of November came and it was this book's time to shine I could not wait to read this book to my kids and they loved it. They loved this book so, so much. They they really enjoyed it just as much as I did. Um, I But the only thing, the only thing was that because it's like a time traveling book, it is easy to kind of get lost and confused quite often. <laughs> um, so when I read it aloud, yeah, I had to like kind of over explain things a bit more thoroughly because there was a lot of things that they were missing. Um, and I, I also had to show them photos quite a lot because as they travel through time, Amorangi and Millie, they keep going back in time. And each time they meet one of their ancestors, which is just beautiful. Um, and they end up going so far back that they reach pre-colonization before there were ever settlers, European settlers here in New Zealand. And it's, it's just, oh, I've like got goosebumps talking about it. Um, it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, but I did, quite often they make references to like what people are wearing. For example, when they're in the 80s, you know, they describe these bright fluoro colors and a woman wearing um, a bathing suit over tights and stuff like that. So there were a lot of references like that that I had to show them pictures of. Also things like um, a milk bar um, and um, like arcade games at the at the corner store and stuff like that like you know our, my our kids just they don't have concepts of these things because they haven't grown up with it um, uh, there was a video store at one point like a blockbuster type of thing wow <laughs> um, my kids have no idea like and you know but it was also cool explaining um, those types of things to them. Like, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to go into a movie store and pick movies off the shelf to rent and take home for a couple days. <laughs> We're like wild, right? Um, it's just a totally foreign concept to our young people nowadays. Um, but anyway, this book, like 10 out of 10, I, I, I loved it. It's so easy to read, um, and it just takes you through so much rich New Zealand history. So if you are not um, a Kiwi and you're maybe doing a study on New Zealand, I would highly, highly, highly recommend reading this book alongside of your study of New Zealand because it's just beautiful and takes you through New Zealand history beautifully. Um, and if you are Kiwi and you are interested in, you know, informing your kids about some Kiwi history, the land that they live on, read this book. It is Incredible. So that's that. Um, obviously this doesn't have, oh, in fact, both of these don't have a movie to go with them. So, you know, we didn't get together and read um, or, and watch the movie with our book club. But we, I believe for this book, we met up at the museum, uh, which was actually very fitting because there's, you know, um, Tangata Finua um, rooms. So like specific um, galleries with Maori uh, artwork and Maori, um, uh, cultural, um, everything. So that was, it was really cool. Anyways, moving on. For the month of December, we read C.S. Lewis's 
uh, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. Now I have to be the first to admit, we did not finish this book and I was so embarrassed to get together with our book club and admit that we hadn't finished it. Um, I believe there was only two families that did actually read the whole thing and I we were not one of them. Um, I think we only got to, the bookmark's still in here, we got to chapter 10. So we did not get very far with this. My girls were not overly interested in listening to the book. You know, it's a lot of old old language. And compared to Amorangi and Millie, which is very like colloquial language and, you know, easy to read, this was a much harder read. So yeah, it was harder to get into. And also my kids have seen the movie several times. So they were kind of uninterested because they already knew the storyline really well. So there was no element of surprise or excitement coming from this book. So I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what to say about this one, but we did get together with our book club and we watched the movie and that was a really big hit and all of the kids thoroughly enjoyed that. So yes, <laughs> that is that one. Now, aside from our book club books, we also read quite a few books on our own, in our own time, in our own homeschool, you know, without sharing with others over this past year. Um, and some of the books, again, like I said, I know I'm missing quite a lot, but here we are. Um, one book set that we read this year was the I Survived series. This is from Scholastic, and the whole thing is written by Lauren Tarsh... I'm going to say this wrong. Lauren Tarshis. Lauren Tarshis. That must be right. <laughs> um, so this is the I Survive series. If you've not seen these, I've pulled one out here to give you guys a better little visual. So this whole series takes you through real life historical events. Events where a lot of people likely died. Um, and the whole thing is a, a fictional story about a, a child, a young person. It's usually um, like a preteen sort of age. Um, and it takes you through their story, a fictional story, about how they survived this awful, whether it be a tragedy or a natural event or um, whatever it is, it takes you through step by step of how this young person survived this awful thing. Um, and oh, this series, you guys, 10 out of 10. We loved reading through these this year. We started, and this is why I grabbed the Hurricane Katrina um, book out, because this was the first book that we read of this series. This is the book that we started with. And out of all of them, this was by far our favorite. Um, and it just, it led into so much more discussion and um, rabbit rabbit trails and background information and researching hurricanes and how they form and you know just my kids were so interested in the whole topic like we dug in so deep into further topics because of this book and it was just I love it when that happens in a homeschool that is that is when real learning happens when you you um when your children ask questions and they're able to have them answered, that is when real learning occurs. And I just, yeah, this book, I, I was just a kid when this happened in 2005. I would have been turning 10 years old that year. So I really don't remember uh, any, any of this. I didn't know hardly any of this um, and what actually happened. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was incredible learning more about it now at the age that I am now and honestly the same goes to say with all of the other books the other one that really stuck with me was the bombing of Pearl Harbor um again like just goosebumps when I think about it the this one and then also the attacks of September 11th these were our three um favorites that we covered just yeah just beautiful. I, I highly recommend this series. Um, it you definitely can be, um, you know, it, these are topics that are, if you have a very sensitive child or if you have a very young children, you might want to avoid these. I, I definitely probably would wait until, you know, your oldest child is, you know, at least, at least kind of around the age of 10. My, my youngest daughter was five and six. Um, you know, this past year, obviously you are talking about, you know, real life tragedies and real life people. 
um, passing away. Um, so yeah, be mindful of that. But if you have um, kids, I mean, and these are such such easy to read books as well, might I add. Um, super easy, super thin. Well, I mean, not super thin, but you know, uh, we, we could read one of these in a week, no problem. And that's how we got through them all so quickly. There are a few pictures throughout it. So these are definitely books that your older kids, you know, sort of that 10 age can read on their own. I mean, even if you're learning about a topic and you want to assign a reader to one of your kids, these would be perfect. Um, but yeah, we really enjoyed them as read alouds this year. And like I said, just so much rich, beautiful learning <laughs> that came from my girls asking questions about these topics. We went into like a lot of YouTube videos and, and books from the library that had more information and, and all of it. Um, and it's just, it's really beautiful when you have something that can spark that type of interest. Okay, next up, we read Little House on the Prairie. Um, in term two last year, we did Living Off the Land by Gather Round Homeschool, and we read Little House on the Prairie alongside that. We also watched the movie and a lot of the um, shows as well, the ones that we could find that were like good enough quality on YouTube. Um, beautiful, love this book, classic. My daughters all enjoyed it. It was so, so relevant doing it alongside the um, Living Off the Land unit, which might I add, was my favorite Gather Round unit to date. Highly, highly, highly recommend that unit. Um, and definitely I would recommend reading Little House on the Prairie by Laura Inglis Wilder alongside of that unit. Love this book. I don't have anything negative to say about it. Obviously some of the language is a little bit older. It's not that like colloquial, um, am I saying that right? Colloquial, colloquial, <laughs> you know. It's not like super common language a lot of the time. And it's obviously, uh, well, this version that we have anyway is, you know, a little bit older, a little bit less exciting to read. We also listened to this book quite a, quite a lot on Audible. So I didn't read the entire thing by myself because I have to be honest, some of it is a little bit tedious. Um, but listening to it on Audible definitely makes it much easier on me. That is that. Next up. I have got this book here. I believe this is also by a Kiwi author, if I'm not mistaken. This is called Echo by Arlo Kelly. Now, I, I honestly can't even remember how this book ends, but I remember loving it. I remember it just being like spine tingling. Again, this is one that we read within, I want to say about a week and a half we got through this because my daughters also really enjoyed it. It is about a boy who is blind. Um, he's not fully blind. He can kind of make out some shapes here and there, um, but basically he befriends um, a whale and he ends up naming him Echo. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful story about this little boy's journey and his friendship with this whale. Um, and like I said, I can't really remember all the rest, <laughs> um, but this is based in New Zealand. Um, and if you are somebody who lives in New Zealand, like me, or again, you are studying New Zealand, um, I definitely recommend this book. Particularly if you live like on the east coast of New Zealand, this will be a super relevant book for your family. And you know, when children are able to see relevance in a book, it makes it a lot more exciting for them. Okay, next up, I have got a few Geronimo Stiltons here to show you guys. I, I'm pretty sure that we read more Geronimo Stiltons than this this year. But I, I can't I can't remember and I didn't write them down, but we definitely read these three. So that's why I grabbed them off the shelf to show you guys. Um, this one we read in the month of October, The Peculiar Pumpkin Thief. Obviously very relevant to the month of October. Not so much here in New Zealand because uh, October is our springtime. But um, nonetheless, uh, we really enjoyed this book. I love Geronimo Stilton. I know that there's a lot of people who don't. Um, uh, but I just like they're such fun reads. I enjoy reading them because they're easy to read. Um, I mean, the writing is super like, um, you know, it's just easy. There's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of colors. It's very fun. It's very bright. Um, and it, it's just funny. It's just funny, ex like silly stuff. Obviously not a lot of moral value. But I think that it's important when you're choosing read-alouds for your family to have a mixture of both, you know, 
have the little house on the prairie, but also have some funny, silly stuff as well um, that everyone actually just enjoys. You know, not every single thing that you read to your kids has to have some type of moral or ethical lesson. Um, I Yeah, Geronimo Stilton definitely doesn't. Um, and so I have heard some people say that his behavior and how he's so scared of things and, um, you know, how he, he's like a fraidy mouse, <laughs> they often refer to him in the book, is, you know, it's like teaching kids lack of character. But I, yeah, like I said, it's just silly, funny stuff that I enjoy reading and my kids enjoy listening to. So anyway, we read The Peculiar Pumpkin Thief. We also read this one, which is a Mice King's, uh, Mice King's version, The Helmet Holdup. We read this when we were trying to cover Vikings um, last year in our Story of the World Volume 2. Again, funny, silly, as always. And then we also read this Hero Mice version, uh, The Perilous Plants, which, again, just it's funny, it's silly. There is no moral value to be had, but um, it's enjoyable, and we <laughs> enjoyed reading it. Next up, I have got some Magic School Bus read-alouds to share with you guys. I can't remember if I added... I may have added... I'll have to go back and look, but to my previous... Um, mid-year read-aloud review that I did a few months back during the winter time. I can't remember if any of these were on there or not, but I brought them out because we definitely read them in 2023, and we loved them all. Um, I love the Magic School Bus chapter books. They're super easy to read. They're, like, quick. They have so much information in them and are just, are just great books all around. If you are, um, you know, particularly studying a science unit, I, I grabbed these three because we we did gather around uh, oceans um, at the start of last year, and so we definitely, um, you know, added in some Magic School Bus books to go alongside that. These were some of the ones that we read this year. The Wild Whale Watch. Um, Sink or Swim, this is like a more modern one. And then The Great Shark Escape. Love all these books. Can't recommend them enough. Honestly, easy, fun, educational, great books. Your older kids can also read these by themselves. If you're doing a unit and you want to assign them a um, an educational reader, these are great ones. Okay, and I feel like along the same lines as the Magic School Bus, um, I have the Magic Tree House. I grabbed these four because we definitely read these four. I can't remember which other ones we read. I think, again, we have read more, but I, I just, I don't remember, and I didn't obviously write them all down. Um, however, we did read these ones. We love the Magic Treehouse books. Can't say enough good things about them. Along the same lines as uh, the Magic School Bus, you know, they're super educational, but yet fun and exciting and easy to read. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen what these <laughs> look like before. But they're, yeah, they're, they're great. Anyways, we read, um, A Night at Dawn, uh, when we were covering, well, when we were sort of trying to cover medieval times, um, with our Story of the World Volume 2. We read this for fun because my kids had some questions about the moon. Um, this is Midnight on the Moon. We also did Dolphins at Daybreak. We read this when we did Oceans from Gather Round, so we had a lot of great oceany themed books with that unit. And then finally Thanksgiving on Thursday, which we obviously read in November um, for Thanksgiving. So yes, these are just some of the Magic Treehouse books that we read this past year. Love, highly recommend, educational, fun, exciting easy to read. Okay, and then a couple of books that I do not have to show you guys because uh, they were library books and I have returned them um, are as follows. I'll put pictures up here for you guys to see. Um, one of them was The Wild Robot. Now, I have heard hugely great things about The Wild Robot. I have, I mean, I was so excited to read it because I had heard all of these amazing things. Oh, okay. Yeah because I had heard all of these amazing things about it. Um, and so I was really eager to read it and to read it to my kids. Now, this was a book that I did not thoroughly read on my own prior to introducing it to my girls. I got through, I would say, about the first um, five to ten chapters on my own before I started reading it to them. And I was like, yeah, this looks acceptable. There's nothing awful in this book from what I can tell. 
when we finished this book, we finished it, we did, um, but, it, it, yeah, I don't know, it was pretty boring, like, to be completely honest, I didn't rate this book very highly in the end, and neither did my girls, um, I mean, the robot did, what was her name, Roz, um, she did quite a few funny things that my kids did really enjoy, like when she disguised herself um, in all the flowers and whatnot. A few other things that she did, you know, as far as like uh, learning different animal behaviors, camouflage and all of that, it was really cool. And to be honest, this book was written beautifully. Uh, the imagery that you were, um, you know, given as you read this book was just beautiful. Like in my mind, I was in, you know, this beautiful tropical land and it was just beautiful all the time. However, in the end, it was, yeah, it was just kind of strange. She ends up, like, raising, um, a gosling after she accidentally kills the gosling's parents, and I don't, yeah, I don't know. In the end, it was kind of strange, um, and I didn't really enjoy it that much, to be completely honest. It was a little bit boring. Nothing overly exciting happened. I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> And then finally, the last book that we read that I don't have to show you guys is Children of the Rush, which I'll put a picture of here. So I've actually got like notes that I took down for this particular book, which I'll, I'll share because I can't really remember all the details. I remember really enjoying it though. What I have got is that I really, I re here, I'll just read it. Really liked overall concept, good historical fiction for learning about Otago and the gold rush. Liked how it was set in the province we live in. Enjoyed the main characters and how they had powers but also good morals compared to the people around them. So that was a really big theme throughout the book is that everyone has gone crazy because of the gold rush. People are not treating others well and everyone is just, you know, in it for themselves out to make money. Um, however, the two main characters who are a young boy and girl, uh, the girl is Maori, the boy is Pakeha, um, you know, white European, and they are kind of the only two that have not lost their minds. Um, and they also have very special, I mean, I wouldn't call it powers, and I don't remember them calling it powers in the book either, but um, one of them, I believe it's the boy, he can see people's, like, aura. He can see whether these people have good intentions or not, based on a color that he can see around them. Um, and so that's how he knows, you know, whether or not these are, like, good or bad people, basically. And then um, the girl, who you're introduced to later, she can actually see, like, gold under the ground. Um, like, she knows exactly where huge gold nuggets are under the earth because she can, like, see their vibration. I really enjoyed that. I'm sure that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really, really liked that personally. Um, uh, there was also a lot of use of Te Reo Māori, which is um, the native Māori language that is spoken by Māori here in New Zealand, and there was a lot of use of Te Reo Māori throughout the book, which I really enjoyed. Um, however, I didn't like the amount of violence described. It talked about people getting beaten up, threatened, and I didn't find that overly suitable for my kids. I do remember that. There's quite a few... Um, instances where that happens. Um, yeah. Um, also, um, what do I say? Okay, the mother of the girl who is Maori gets treated badly by the owners of a hotel um, who, uh, who are um, white men. They treat her badly at quite a few instances, which I didn't like. Um, there's also mention of racism towards Maori and Chinese throughout the book. Obviously, this is you know, part of the historical context. There is also some sadness throughout this book. Uh, the main character, his name is Michael. His mother um, passes away very early on in the book, and his father is just in an absolute state of, like, awful depression, and he can't even bring himself to, like, hug his son. Um, there's a really sad scene that I can f vividly remember, and I can, like, see it in my head, right? Even though it's a book, I can, like, still, I'm, like, can replay it in my mind. There's a really sad scene um, where Michael is just like, he, he, he assumes his father's about to give him a hug and he's like so happy his dad's about to hug him and then his dad doesn't. And, it, it's, and then he talks about how he just wishes his father would hug him and it's, oh, 
it's it's really sad <laughs> that made me really sad um okay um, and then, oh yeah, finally, um, the last thing that I, I wasn't overly keen on in this book was that the main characters, um, the boy and the girl, they end up kind of forming like a romantic relationship, not like anything crazy. Um, but by the end of the book, you know, it's obvious that they have very romantic feelings for each other. And I just, I feel like that's kind of unnecessary in a children's book. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I didn't really like that, but overall i enjoyed the book <laughs> that's like a full-on in-depth review that's a way more in-depth review than i gave you on any of the other books but i think that's just because i had it written down so i i was able to remember it a lot easier i have uh recently got out children of the rush book two it has come out recently in our library um i finally had it when i was there the other day i am going to read it by myself first before i read it to my girls just to make sure there's nothing that I don't like. Um, you know, now I'm assuming that that romantic relationship would have become something even more. So I'm kind of a little bit wary of that. Um, so I'm definitely going to read that first before introducing it as a read aloud in our homeschool. Okay, you guys, that is all. I, I, I've talked for long enough. If you've made it this far, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to me blabber on about books. I love books. I love reading books to my kids. I love hearing about what other people are reading. Um, let me know down below in the comments what read alouds you guys are reading in your homeschool at the moment and what read alouds you might recommend for anyone else. I'm always interested to know what other people are reading and to get some ideas because it is it's not easy you know it's it's hard out there some books are just not suitable for kids and they're being marketed as, as if they're for kids um and it's it's really hard to know what's good and what's not without like putting the effort in to read the entire book yourself and you know as busy moms we don't often uh, have that time <laughs> um so yeah let me know down below what you guys are reading and what you might recommend for us in our homeschool because i'm always looking for new fresh ideas thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i will catch you in the next one bye mm -hmm.